All right, guys, as you can see, uh, we're going to be factoring polynomials. We're going to start the factoring that we've talked about quite a bit up to this point. Uh, we're going to be using the greatest common factor and the distributive property and basically working backwards from what you've been doing. Um, and hopefully, by the end of this video and by the end of next week, you will not be thinking like this poor cat is that, that algebra is confusing you. If you need to, pause, rewind, use the discussion board, uh, shoot me an email, whatever you need to do to follow along. Real quickly, got to double check and make sure we're okay on our background knowledge. This is what we've been doing up to this point. Uh, we've been simplifying use the dis using the distributive property. Uh, all of us should feel pretty confident at this point that we can do this. What we'll now do is basically I will give you an expression or a polynomial like this and you will work backwards and factor that out. Think of uh, the opposite of multiplication is division. With polynomials, essentially, the opposite of multiplication is factoring. Um, so as you can see, we've been using the distributive property. And now instead, we're going to work backwards to factor these out. Um, the big idea is that greatest common factor and that we want to have a completely factored form of a polynomial. And you'll see what I mean as we work some examples in class. Uh, but just got to double check and make sure we're OK with the greatest common factor. Remember, the biggest thing that can be divided by everything. Everything can be divided into that number. And so let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, we're going to expand out some of these terms and find common factors. We basically want to find the greatest common factor, the biggest thing that we can take out of this. Um, if I'm just looking at constants, you might already know what the greatest common factor is of 16 and 56. If you didn't, you would factor this out into a prime factorization. And there would be your 16, whereas here would be how I would get 56. Notice 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that equals 16. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 8 times 7 is 56. What I'm looking for is common factors. Uh, for every one that they have in common, I'm going to bring that out. So here's a 2, then here's another 2, and then here's another 2. So notice we have three 2's, 2 to the 3rd and 2 to the 3rd. Each of those gives me 8. And now what you might already know, the greatest common factor of 16 and 56 is 8 because 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 7 is 56. The biggest thing that I could take out of both of them is 8. That gives you an idea of where we're headed with variable terms. Uh, to look at these variable terms, these would be monomials we're trying to find the greatest common factor. I'll look at the constants first, then I'll look at the variables. When I look at the constants, I just want the greatest common factor of 8 and 4. I don't think most of us need to actually expand those out. We just know the biggest thing that they can both be divided by is 4, because 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. So we know the greatest common factor there is the 4. Then I need to look at, well, what's going to be for our variables? Well, notice I have x to the third, which is x times x times x, or I have x squared, which is x times x. Remember, for each thing they have in common, we can bring it out. So I have two x's here, I have two x's here. Since I only have three on the left, and I don't have three on the right, that means the biggest thing that I could take out of both of them would be 4 x squared. That would be the greatest common factor of 8x cubed and 4x. And to help you see that, then I need to think to myself, well, what would I multiply 4x squared by to get back to either one of these? To get 4x squared back to 8x cubed, we would need to multiply that by a 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and then x, because x squared times x equals x cubed. To get 4x squared back to 4x squared, we'd simply have to multiply it by 1, and we're good to go. Uh, last example again, I know I'm going a little fast, so if you need to pause it and rewind it, by all means, feel free to do so. I got 27y squared, and I have 18y. I'm looking for the greatest common factor of 27 and 18. I think most of us know that's 9. Then I'm looking for the most I can take out of each of these. This has 1y, this has 2y's. That means they each have a y. 9y would be the common factor here, the greatest common factor. If I multiply that by 3y, I'd get 27y squared. And if I multiply 9y times 2, I'd be able to get 18y. That means 9y would be the greatest common factor of each of those terms. Now we'll be able to apply that to what we talked about. We're actually going to work backwards and factor polynomials using the greatest common factor. Uh, so this is what I mean by that. We're going to use the distributive property backwards to factor these polynomials. Um, the problem that we just did, we found the greatest common factor. And that's the first thing that we want to do. Back here, we just found that the greatest common factor is going to be 9y. We know that the 9y is the greatest common factor for each of these. Now I want to write each term as the product of the greatest common factor and the remaining factors. What we just basically did, I'm going to write this first term as 9y times 3y because that means 9y times 3y is 27y squared. I'm going to write this second term as a product of the greatest common factor and the remaining factors, which would be 9y times 2, like we just did. To factor this using the distributive property, you should see then we basically have what we've talked about in the past, a times b plus c equals ab plus ac. Notice on each of these, the a term would be 9y. So now we'll work backwards, and we're going to take that 9y out take the 9y out, what would I be left with in the parentheses? Well, 
I see a 3y plus 2. And so I have 9y outside of 3y plus 2. Nice thing about factoring, and that would be our answer. Nice thing about factoring here, we can actually always check our answer. We can always see if we're right using the distributive property. 9y times 3y and 9y times 2 better get us back to where we started. And if you notice, uh, if you distribute that out, it definitely does. So again, we're using the distributive property backwards and we're using greatest common factors. Uh, let me give you another example here, 15x minus 3. In this case, there's not a whole lot that we can take out. What's the greatest common factor of 15 and 3? Well, it turns out they both have 3 as a factor. 3 times... 5x gives me 15x, and then of course 3 times y gives me 3y. Again, you see that term that's common each time here. I'm going to bring that out. 3 comes outside of the parentheses. I now have remaining a 5x minus y, and so that becomes my answer in factored form, 3 times 5x minus y. The way to check it again is to use the distributive property, so I say 3 times 5x minus y, that would equal a 15x minus 3y, and we're back to where we started. So again, the factored form is what we're looking for. A little bit difficult one here uh, with three terms. Still works the same. I'm trying to identify the common term of each of the, the coefficients, 4, 8, and 2. The greatest common factor of those is 2. And now you might have to do a little thinking on this. This is a, a, b. This is a, b, b. And this is a, b. It has to be common among all three, and so notice, uh, this one has two A's, but this one only has one. Uh, this has two B's, but this one only has one. And this each just has A and a B. So if you notice, it should be a 2AB that we are bringing out. Now I need to see, what would I multiply back by to get to this term? Well, I need 2 times 2 to give me 4, and I would be missing 1A to get back to A squared. Uh, same idea over here. I have 2AB again. Now what do I need to multiply to get back to there? 2 times what equals 8? That would be 4. And then AB times what equals AB squared, and I'm missing a B. Finally, notice I want 2AB times something to get me back to where I was. Well, it turns out that's the same thing, and it's just a 1. Now, you see 2AB each time. I'm going to bring a 2AB out. That leaves me inside the parentheses. I have 2A, I have a minus 4B, and I have a plus 1. So I have 2AB outside of 2A, minus 4B, plus one. And again, you could check it by distributing that out. One last example to look at again, um, just to make sure that you pause and slow down a little bit here. Yeah, I have a 7 and I have a 21, but if I don't have a greatest common factor in that third term as well, then I don't have anything. So now I'm back to the similar situation where I have x, x, y, y, I have x, y, y, and I have x, y, and that's only going to be the best thing that I can bring out. Bring x, y out of the parentheses, that leaves me 7 x, y for the first term plus 3y for the middle term, and then minus 1. To check that, just distribute it out. Each time, you should get back to where you started. So notice 7x squared, y squared, plus, whoops, excuse me, and that's why we check it. Good job, this is on the live video. Don't know why that would be a 3. That would be a 21y in the middle term, and that's why I'm checking this, um, because then I would see that it would be a 21 xy squared, and then of course minus xy. I'm glad you guys saw that on the live video. The checking actually does help. My answer is right here, and it's a good thing that I did use that distributive property. So again, the basic idea is finding the greatest common factor, uh, writing each of those terms as a product of the, of the greatest common factor and whatever else you have, and then factor that greatest common factor out basically using the distributive property uh, backwards. We will definitely work on this more in class on Monday, but it would be a terrific help for you to watch this this weekend uh, so you don't end up uh, cross-eyed and confused like this poor kitty. Have a good weekend, guys.